Hello everyone. It's been almost a year since I've been on YouTube. My apologies. Um, after the canoe accident last summer, I came up with a new idea, a new adventure for this summer. And I'm super excited about it. This is the first episode in a series called Going North. And here's how it got started. I wanna take a road trip. I wanna take a big road trip, but I wanna take it in, in some old car with like a lot of kilometers on it that you wouldn't think would work. And I thought, eh, okay, that's fine. But what if it was a classic car? That would be a little more interesting, just a little more flair. So I phoned a good friend of mine, Justin Brunel. So Ryan Lester gave me a call one day and I think I was in the van that he found for me. I've been living in a van that he found for me and <laughs> got up and going. And he called me and he always has these awesome ideas. I got a script for this, I got a script for that. The projects always turn out. We had worked on Dead End Drive together and that's how we met in the film business. And since Dead End Drive, over the years, that was nine years ago we, we filmed Dead End Drive. Justin is now full-time film and he's had me work on his projects. I love film. And so I've played with my own films on the side and Justin's helped out with a number of those as well. But this was a little bit different. Usually we end up shooting projects in Edmonton or in the surrounding area. But he called and he asked, do you wanna to go to Alaska? And that's obviously a no brainer. Are you kidding? Yes, of course. To Alaska in a classic car. And he's, and he's like, Oh man, that sounds amazing. Like, I'd love to do that. And he said, have you seen the movie Into the Wild or read the book? I said, my ultimate goal is to get the Magic Bus 142 from Into the Wild. About Chris McCandless, who um, went out into the wild into Alaska just outside of Healy and uh, lived in a bus for a while and he ended up passing away there. And he finds an old bus in the middle of nowhere that had a wood stove in it and figured, okay, well, this is the place to stay for now. He said, that bus is actually still out there, and do you want to go to it? And for me, that, I, I didn't even think that would ever be a, like, that was never on my radar until he said, do you want to go to the bus? And that's when Justin said, I'm so in, I'm so excited, I can't believe you asked me to do this. <laughs> I'm like, right on, let's do it. That was my favorite movie for a while because that character is quite relatable to me. I really love adventure. I like being by myself. I like going out into to nature and exploring and, and having these sorts of adventures. And I really related to that character. And it is an extremely humbling movie. Probably the biggest reason that I thought Justin would be in on this trip is because he's done some serious adventurous filmmaking trips in the last few years. When it was Canada's 150th birthday two years ago, um, he went across Canada and filmed for 150 days straight every province and territory in Canada. Our timelines was two weeks. We have two weeks to do whatever we need to do. And first of all, getting up to Alaska, driving from where we are, that takes two weeks <laughs> just to do the drive alone pretty lofty goal, um, over 2,000 miles one way to Alaska. And if we want to spend 24 hours at this bus, that, that, will, be a little bit, that will be a little bit of a logistical challenge, but let's do it. Let's figure it out. Let's beat those challenges and get to the bus. Drive to Alaska in a beat up old car and go to the bus. So I knew Justin would get into it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm into canoeing. Uh, some of you have seen my canoe trip videos. I'm into snowmobiling. Um, I just, I like nature. I like exploring, finding new things. And I like cars and I like classics. So this kind of rounds up everything that I like to do in two weeks. <laughs> Hopefully with no problems. <laughs> um, but I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to get started. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. He knows so many things about so many different things. And one of those things being cars. He has helped me in so many ways with my own vehicles. I am, I'm now living in a camper van. I've wanted to live the van life for uh, a long time. And 
he actually ended up finding my van for me and he got it up and running, which that's just who he is. And he will not accept anything for it. He's just, he wants to help and he's just that kind of person. And we both have that mutual understanding and respect for the outdoors and adventure. And when an opportunity like a project like this comes up, you don't say no to that. When Alaska popped into my head, I'm like, oh wow, yeah, I've got to do that. But man, it's so far, <laughs> you know, and, and in an older car as well, right? So there, there are risks there. When I asked Justin if he wanted to come on this trip with a classic car, I didn't know what kind of classic car we were gonna end up with. I hadn't even looked yet. So I started looking online and the first one that I really wanted was a 47 Oldsmobile with a hydromatic transmission. Um, very cool looking car, very classic. It was a complete car. Everything was there. It wasn't running though. And part of my criteria for this project was to actually find a running and driving car that I could drive home. So this one wasn't running. Also, it was in Saskatchewan, so it was out of the Alberta province. It would have to pass an out of province inspection, which is very hard, so I knew it wouldn't pass that. So that one I had to scrap. And then another one was like an early 60s Dodge Dart with a push button automatic four door. Very funny looking car, but very cool at the same time. Um, with a small V8, so it'd be somewhat efficient. The problem with that old Oldsmobile is you'd be stressing it out on a, on a modern highway because they, they weren't designed for our modern highway speeds. The, the Dodge Dart would have done it, but then I found out it was out of province, so then that was scrapped. And again, I'm look, I was, that was a running and driving car that needed some work. So that wasn't going to work out because it was out of province. And then this Meteor popped up. Weeks go by and I kept looking online and nothing was changing and nothing new was coming up. And then I phoned Justin and told him about this car. And he's like, what do you think? And I go, I think this is the car. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I go, I don't know, I just have this thing where like when my kids need to buy a car or a friend or whatever, they'll find some ads online and I'll go, this is it. And I can pretty much tell from an ad how legit someone is, how they've taken care of the car. And then I confirm it once I go and see the car. So I told him, I said, I think this is the car. I'm pretty sure. So um, I phoned the owner. Hello? Hi, Reg. It's Ryan calling. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. So we got a 1970 Meteor. What, can, what else can you tell me about it? And I knew in the first five minutes, without a doubt, this was the car. The, the, the people that live across the street from me, the lady, she's in her 70s and her dad bought it brand new. Oh, um, wow. When he passed away, she got it. And um, they drove it around for a year or two or whatever. A couple of things that sold me on it were jump in it right now, turn the key and drive it. It is a totally drivable car. He drove it for three years to work five days a week and he parked it about a year ago. Um, you know, the seat was starting to wear through and the, the, there was some rust starting on the body and he doesn't know body work. He's more of a mechanically inclined guy and he said, I, I just didn't want to do the body work. So he was hoping someone would preserve the car, either restore it or drive it as it is. Ryan is the psychic mechanic. He knew that we were getting this car before he even saw it in person. He made a comment without me asking. He goes, you know, this is the kind of car you could drive to the West Coast. And I, and then I'm like, okay, then this is it. This is the car. So we talked a bit more. And then finally I said to him, I'm coming this weekend with cash and I am buying this car. We were buying this car. So then I phoned Justin back. I go, well, we got a road trip on Saturday. So we got in the car, we drove a couple hours to Meeting Creek, Alberta, and lo and behold, there was this old 1970 Mercury just sitting out in the snow, and there was a lot of snow on the ground. It was a very cold day. This was December 23rd, and it was a cold, snowy day. And I see the car, and uh, okay, that's a 1970 Mercury Meteor. 
we opened up the engine, we took a look at the vehicle, and Ryan, he, he was so calm throughout this whole thing, and he was just like, no question. And he goes, okay, here's how you start it. Step on the gas, turn the key, vroom. And it fired right up, ran perfect. I'm like, okay. He even told the owner when we got there, we're taking it, before he even drew, drove it. So that, that gave me confidence that, okay, this is gonna be a good vehicle and we will make it to Alaska. Doesn't mean we won't make it to Alaska without a few hitches along the way, but we will make it to Alaska. I gotta thank you. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, well, good. Very yeah. happy and, uh, with this. Well, I'm, uh, I know I this is. You'll be happy with it. And... Yeah. She purrs <laughs> like a kitten, man. Yeah. So we just took it for a, I wouldn't even call it a test drive. It was, I'm buying the car anyways. This is the one we're gonna take on the trip. I was already sold on it. I just wanted to drive it up the street and back. And we did, and the brakes worked, and it ran great. So long story short, we drove it home without a problem at all. We stopped in uh, Camrose just to clean the windows because it had been sitting for a while. He'd just been starting it sometimes and moving it around his yard. So cleaned the windows so I, we could see better and got it home. We got 21 miles per gallon on the way home, which blew me away. I was expecting 13, 14, 15 tops. So it will save us fuel. Expect the unexpected. So we're gonna take this car to Alaska. 